Welcome once again to the No Split Seats. I am the Mac Conservative Crime Fire. We present part two of our interview with the Brandon Espinoza as part of the top ten most influential people in Central Illinois pro wrestling. Renee Hawkins uh, made the PWI 500. Um, there's uh, quite a number of people that thought he wasn't ready to be on that list yet, and then their jaws dropped a few months later when they saw him on the WWE Extreme Rules pay-per-view against Ryback. Um, do you think what are your thoughts? I don't about think that? I, don't, I don't agree anywhere any with that. Um, the fact is, is Ace had trained for like three years. Yeah, he took off a year because he had some, you know, issues with the way things were being handled at the gym that he was at, and then he came to me. But he trained for a long period of time, and to be honest, you know, you, you guys don't know of a lot of the work we do outside of the Midwest area. Yeah. Um, Ace had traveled to, you know, Wisconsin, Ohio, Indiana. He traveled down to Mississippi with me. He's traveled to Tennessee, Arkansas, North Carolina, you know, Kentucky. He took the necessary steps to do what he needed to do. Um, just like Dave Osborne had 109 matches, Ace had 100-plus matches. Ace had 20-plus feds he worked for. Ace had numerous states he had worked for. You know, it, it, and it's... It, it, I understand a lot of the people don't believe in his work or might not think so because he's mostly because he's a smaller guy. You know what I understand that. I think it was more of a matter is he wasn't that good yet, and then he got a lot better towards the end of his freshman uh, freshman year, early sophomore year. Well, it, it, the people I could why, see it. They 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 look at your accomplishments for the mm -hmm. year. Um, they look at your accomplishments, and Ace did something that a lot of the guys in this area refused to do. He didn't just stick in one area. He didn't just stick with one or two feds. He didn't stick with wrestling once or twice a, a month. Mm -hmm. Ace stuck with wrestling two to four times a week, wrestling numerous states, numerous feds, and made sure that he got better each time. Yes, just like I did when I started, just like when Osborne started, and just like anybody when they started. He wasn't that great. But, you know, he started listening. He listened to me. He listened to the other guys he worked with. He listened to the guys that were traveling with us, and he got better. You know, he got into the PW, or the PWI 500. Great. He did what he needed to do. Like I said, he filled out the, the application necessary. He had proof of it, just like I tell all my guys to keep their match history. He kept proof of it. He has matches online, videos of them. They saw it. They put him in there. When he got PWI Rookie of the Year, why not? He had, again, over 100 matches, over 20 feds work for in numerous states. Who else has a resume like that in their first year other than Dave Osborne now? Yes, we're many people. No. And I mean, and I understand, I, I mean, yeah, maybe an FCW guy or now an OVW guy that's, you know, a TNA developmental deserve to be in it because they've gone to the next necessary step and they are right below the major leagues. But it, it, Ace really took up what he needed to do, just like Dave Osborne did, you know, and it's just. I understand a lot of guys didn't, didn't see that, but now when you look at Ace as a competitor and look at Ace as what he can do in the ring as an entertainer, as a wrestler, or in just in general, it's hands over feet a lot better than a lot of the guys in the area because he has listened to the guys that have trained him and listened to the guys that he's worked with, you know, and listened to the guys that he hasn't worked with that have watched him and he's become better. And that's, and hopefully Ace, Ace has got, he, he can go anywhere he puts his mind to as long as he works for it. Hero or villain, which do you prefer? Because a lot of time, there's been times where, let's say, you're a villain most of the time, and then when you went to World League Wrestling, my first instinct was, okay, he's a bad guy, boo him. Mm -hmm. And you were coming out as a good guy, and then it was kind of an awkward reaction um, from the fans, I guess. I definitely like playing a villain a little bit more because you can you can really jog, you can really mess with people's emotions as a villain. It's really hard to do as a face as a good guy just because of the fact that they're just supposed to try to cheer for you. They're supposed to try to want you to win that good battle, but that's about it. As a villain, you can really really touch them on you know little subjects. Prime example: Chuck Taylor also makes babies make babies cry. Well, that's not nice. I mean, I don't want to make my babies cry, but hey, you can really you can really touch on somebody's emotions by making their kid cry. Or, you know, you can you can scream at the guy that's been the top baby face or the top good guy and really just start being cheap with him, hitting him in the face, kicking him, choking him. Fans hate you for that. You can really do little things, you know, like going out and riding on a on a vacuum cleaner or on a on a Davy Richards. Yeah, exactly. Did that. And what happened? <laughs> The fans hated him because of it, and he was a bad guy, which was the point. A lot of people don't know that, but that was the point. And he was. 
It was just, it, it was an awkward. Um, David Richards, I guess, uh, was far less serious in an Epic Eight tournament than you'd otherwise see him in a ROH ring. Himself, but in the like, same sense, self parodying himself, I guess. A lot of people didn't realize they were entertained with it. Yeah. And that's our job. Our job is to be wrestlers and entertainers. And if you're not entertained with what you're seeing, why would you want to come back? Mm -hmm. If you want to see a wrestling bout, why don't you go see an NCAA, uh, NCAA tournament? Why don't you go to a local high school during the weekends on the, in the wintertime and watch a wrestling tournament? You, it, 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 that's not what we are. We're supposed to be entertainers. We're supposed to be a theatric. We're supposed to be sports entertainers. You know, a lot of people are like, no, I'm a wrestler. No, you're a sports entertainer. Get over it. That's what you're doing. You go out there to hope that the fans will come back to buy you, pay for you. And if they don't, if they don't want to pay for you, why are you here? Why do the promoters need to use you? If if you can't you can't sell tickets, then what's the point? And I'm sorry, but unless you're six foot three, completely chiseled, why do the fans want to see you as just a wrestler? I know a lot of people don't see to pay to see me to be a wrestler. They pay to see me to be a complete douche, or come to see me fight the good fight. How tough it is to keep track of all these alignments, especially if you're a fan. <sighs> Believe me, I, I, I'm i still a fan just as much as I am one of the guys and one of the wrestlers. Still just as much as a fan and coming out and watching. I mean, I can I can pick up on the little things that people do right away to figure out who is who, but whenever it first happens, I don't even know who's who, and I have to watch to watch, you know, figure out who it is. I mean, I love watching wrestling. I watch it on Mondays, watch it as much as I can on Thursdays and Fridays as well. Just I'm normally on the road at that point or recovering from being on the road down into Louisville. Um, but... It's just, it's great. I mean, you it, that's the point. You want to figure out who's the good guy, who's the bad guy, kind of like you do when you watch a movie or when you watch a play, you know? So I, I love it. I mean, it's definitely hard to figure out at first, but once you figure it out, it's great. <laughs> How do you manage family uh, with all this extensive travel? I and mean, you've traveled mm. all the way to Louisville and back to St. Louis to Louisville and who knows where else. It's hard. I mean, it, it really is hard. Um, I mean, to be honest, I have a normal 40-hour job. Uh, luckily for me, I work from home, work for Enterprise, and work from home, so I, I, I get to stay there and I get to see my kids as much as I can. Um, not, But that didn't happen until, like, early July. Um, up until that point, it was very hard. It was very hectic. I didn't... I, I've, got my three-year-old daughter, my six-year-old daughter, and my two-year-old son, and to be honest, I missed a lot of their first couple of years. Hmm. Um, I mean, obviously, I didn't miss some of their first monumental things, like the first word or walking or anything like that or crawling, but the same sense, it's still really hard to deal with. Um, I mean, I've got that 40-hour job. I do yard work uh, on the side to make a little extra money, and then I'm on the road three days a week, and then I constantly am at the weight gym now. You know, since February, I've been there five days a week uh, for two hours each, each, you know, each day I'm there, and it's hard, but but you know, if you want something bad enough, you you've got to you've got to really reach for it. And I'm 25 years of age. I've only got a couple more years to really push for this. And at that point, I guess you know my kids won't be that old, and they'll they'll realize I did It'll it. We start in kindergarten. <laughs> yeah, well, one is in kindergarten. So, um, but hopefully, whenever they grow up, if you know if they remember this, they'll they'll realize that I did it for a reason, and hopefully that'll egg them on to you know really go for something they want to accomplish too, and not just lackadaisically, you know, go towards it and not work and, and think it's going to happen because it won't. You have to go for it. No, watch it on videotape eventually. I mean... Videotape, YouTube, whatever. You know, like they're constantly watching it on YouTube with me, so they love it. They, my, my kids call it champion because they can't say wrestling for some reason, but it's whatever. They love it. <laughs> Predictions for the remainder of 2012 and early 2013. With you or your students? Um, I'm hoping Osborne gets the opportunity to at least be nominated for Pro Wrestling Illustrated Rookie of the Year. I mean, he's got the credentials. Um, I hope Ace continues to do what he can and gets further and further along. Hopefully, you know, I can see myself in one of the top, you know, feds in America. You know, I've got buddies in every one of them, so hopefully my connections there will happen as well as my work will happen. I've done some tryouts for a couple of them, and hopefully at some point I'll get, you know, get something from them. So... Anybody you think we should keep an eye on that we're not giving enough attention to? And there's been people saying, I'm pushing the wrong people or touting the wrong people. Now, if we're talking about Central Illinois area, um, I, I think... That and beyond. I mean, I mean, I think Tony G is a good guy to watch. I mean, I've seen him progress like in the, in the past year and a half, watching him, wrestling him once or twice. Um, constantly keep your eye on Osborne. I know for a while you guys weren't giving him any credit at all. Um, I mean, it is kind of hard whenever you've got a bigger guy and there's a lot of big guys in the business. Um, so please watch him. He's a great, 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 great wrestler and a great entertainer as well.
I did um, put him on the watch list. I saw that. Some good so. stuff. Um, there's now I've got a couple guys that are coming out of the Broadway school. There's a guy named Matt King. Watch for him. I've seen him train, and he's already he's already got it. It's just that he's got to get ready to be in the shows. He can do it in practice. Now we just got to see if he can do it for us for you know matches wise. And not get stage fright. <laughs> not get stage fright. His his real name his his name right now is Matt King. He might change it. Uh, he's not related to Chase King. So there might be a name change coming in place. You never know. I don't know when it happens. I'll let you know. Um, other guys to watch. Uh, Dave Vaughn is still a guy to watch. He's had some opportunities with things. Um, I think he pretty his, much stays to South Broadway. You don't really see him no, and, outside of there, apart from the occasional show. And if you do see him outside of there, it's gonna. Hopefully, he'll start traveling more. I think his issue is more. He's a physical trainer, mm -hmm. and so work work reasons kind of keep him from being able to do stuff. Um, but hopefully you get to see him more and get to see him do stuff. Uh, he's a great worker, great wrestler, great guy. Um, I, it, hopefully Dingo comes back more often. We can see him work more because he's a great guy to watch too. I'm surprised he came back and retiring because he said, he said once he was done, he's done. And then unfortunately his last match, he broke his neck. And then a year or so later, he's back in the ring. Everybody gets the itch to come back. I mean, and that's the case. I mean, I've had times where I've wanted to quit, but I, you know, next show comes, and I'm like, I'm ready to go. Let's go. So, and that just might have been it. I mean, he might have finally got that itch to come back. He settled in with his, uh, his, you know, his outside life, and he figured he wanted to come back. So, hopefully, yeah, he crank called me for two years. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, hopefully that stops, and hopefully we get to see him more in the ring too. Um, I mean, the whole Central Illinois area has a lot of talented guys. It's really hard to point them out, and hopefully, some of us will get opportunities to do things elsewhere, like Matt Cage, Christian Rose, you know, Alex Castle. You know, the Team Overkill group is great. Joey O'Wiley. Um, you know, my group is great to watch. You know, there's guys at the New Midwest, the guys here at Pro Wrestling Glory. You know, they're really trying to do more and to work more and wrestle more so that they can get better. And as once, you know, once things happen, I mean, they'll happen for all of us at some point. So hopefully, you know, we'll get to see some of us at the better national stage. So that's what you'd like to have that you haven't had among the feds that uh, you regularly compete in. Never wrestled Jason B, so that would be definitely a different type of match to have. Uh, especially if I was able to use my OVW character, that'd be great. If not, I've still if I've worked that character before against and for, so I mean it'd be great to work with him and wrestle him. Um, I've never wrestled Christian Rose in a singles match, and that's happening next Saturday at APW. Yep. Um, I just wrestled Matt Cage for the first time in a singles match. Love that. That was awesome. You can watch it on YouTube. Um, who else is some guys that I have never wrestled? I've never wrestled Matty Malcolm, which was supposed to happen, never did. I've never wrestled Davey Richards. It's been slated numerous times, never happened. I'd love to wrestle him still. Um, I mean, there's numerous guys I haven't wrestled that I'd like to, but those are some of the names right off the top of the bat. So, um, Early going, who do you think is the wrestler of the year in Central Illinois? Central Illinois, wrestler of the year. Um, and I thought you would have won that. Or uh, last year, or at I least won, that was my pick. But I won MWR's Wrestler of the Year, so that was that's good for me. And then I got Match of the Year, so obviously I still got some recognition. Wrestler of the Year, um, I mean Rose has really been p picking it up, you know, this year alone. Uh, I could see him winning it if Cage, you know, does more in the Central Illinois, more than less than up in the Iowa and you know the Chicago area. I could see him winning it. Um, I mean, if ACH comes into the area more often, I could see him winning it with the things he's been doing recently. I mean, there's a lot of guys, but those are, again, just some of the names I could think of off the top of my head. So, All right. I don't know how much time we got. Uh, we got a few more minutes. I don't think we've gone the full hour yet. Um, I'll give you a few names, and then uh, give me your thoughts about them. Okay. Um, Matt Cage. Phenomenal. I mean, he's a proud Caucasian. Right, but no, great guy, great guy. He knows what he's doing, and I can the the world's for the taking for him. Alex Castle. Alex Castle. Uh, I mean, he's getting into shape. He's working out more. He's dropping the weight. His new manager slash girlfriend's helping him out. You know, they can I can see a lot of business coming out of that. Just because you know, whenever you have a manager that that's a worker too, it just helps you out even more. Um, another guy that you know just needs to break through that glass ceiling, and once he does, I mean, again, world's for his taking too. Oliver Kane. Oliver Kane. I love Oliver Kane. He's a great guy. Uh, I'm going to be taking his belt from him soon. 
Uh, you hope. He's had that thing a couple of years. Yeah, I'll, he's, I'll take it. Uh, he held, it. He's held that thing on, he's held on to that belt with a death grip. I'll get him. I'll get him at some point. He'll he'll, he'll stop cheating me and I'll get him. Um, he's a great guy. Again, another guy that's just waiting for the opportunity. He doesn't really work too much out of a certain area and certain feds he works for. And once he does, I mean, the, 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 the business will get to see more of him. And hopefully at that point, it'll just be... He'll just start going elsewhere, you know, not just stuck in that one area that he's in. And he did make the PWI 500. Finally, finally. We encouraged him. I even put in a word for him with Frank Cruda. Well, good. Well, I'm glad he made it, and he definitely deserves it, especially keeping that title as long as he has. I mean, it was it's a prestigious championship, and he's held it for a year and a half, almost two years now. I mean, why not have him in there? I mean, why, why, why would anybody else be in there and not him? Jason Jones. Uh, former uh, World League Wrestling, World League he's Wrestling champion. champion. He's yeah. still the champion. Great guy. I mean, I can see, I can see that ginger going places. Uh, phenomenal worker. He knows what he's doing in and out. I mean, he is the trainer of Harley Race's school right now, um, and I know that he's done dark work and backstage and extra work for almost every major Fed out there. I honestly don't see him lasting on our area that much longer, and I can see him uh, following in the footsteps of his bu uh, buddy Brian Breaker here soon. Jimmy Jacobs. Great guy. Uh, I hear we're, we're, we're twins whenever I do my comb over hair and stuff just because we look alike. I've had actual promotions tell me that I, uh, that they would love to use me, but the fact is they've already got Jimmy and they don't need a second one. Um, great guy. He's really helped me out and really helped me learn that I had to get the confidence that I needed. Um, great guy, and I, I, I wish him the best in whatever he does, whether it's Ring of Honor or anywhere else he goes. Phenomenal guy, and I, I just, again, wish him the best. Travis Cook. Travis Cook. Your manager. Well, one of your managers. One of them. He, he thinks he's the last dying breed of managers, but he hasn't realized what's happening down in the South area. There's a lot of managers there. One of my best friends and good friends down at OVW is Mo Green. Uh, he used to be Lamont with um, Ernest and Cat Miller. Now he's the manager of Chris Silvio, um, who just got a TNA tryout, regularly shows up on Ring of Honor. He, used to, he was one of the only people recently to actually be in WWE's developmental to be a manager. One of the only people to ever get that done for him, and he's a great guy. So when Travis said he's the last of a dying breed, I don't see that at all because Mo Green's down at OVW doing yeah. great work there. Love watching him talk on the mic and love watching him accompany his guys out there. Travis is another guy that's just great. He can talk on the mic. He can. He really does. He really helped me step up on my game on what I needed to do whenever I f first started using him as my manager. And me and Donovan Ruddick took over Broadway with that. You know, it was a great guy. He knows again. He just knows what he's doing, and hopefully. It, he, what he did for me and Ruddick will also help for Vaughn and Casa over at uh, over at SICW. Christian Rose. I hate the guy. <laughs> no, I'm playing. <laughs> guys, guys, great. I mean, he he's hilarious. He I, the fact that we both have the comb over and the emo hairstyle is even better. Um, I mean, another guy that's. Again, just like the, the whole team overkill with Joey O'Reilly combined is just a guy waiting for an opportunity. Once he's got that opportunity, like he has a dream wave, I, I don't see what can stop him. Um, you know, he's just waiting for an opportunity to, to, to compete on the national level. He's on the upper indies, you can tell, with dream wave and other feds he works for, and just waiting for that moment to happen. And, you know, hopefully, hopefully the match next week can be that moment that can help both of us show what we can really do in this business and what we can really do as competitors and sports entertainers. All right, last one. Gary Jackson. Love the guy. Great guy to learn from. Um, me and him had some issues up front just because, you know, I'm the new school kid and he's the old school guy. And, you know, we didn't mesh well because we didn't want to work for each other. We weren't, wanted to work against each other. You know, he's the veteran. I feel I, I, I know what I'm doing. I mean, it's, it's accomplished, you know, a lot for me. Um, and we, we didn't, we very, very badly clashed at the beginning. But after a while, after that one clash and we let it all out, it just went great from there. I mean, the fans seemed like they really loved seeing me versus Gary. Uh, unfortunately, we did it too much, and it became, it, in my opinion, and I think well, it's a good the heavyweight title. Yeah. Well, it, but it became stale. You know, you can only do so many matches so many times before, you know, it just is like, uh, but I mean, it, it's a great guy to work with. He taught me a lot. He's taught my guys a lot. He's one of the guys that helped me out in the beginning of my career, and I wish that he would have gotten bigger opportunities back in his, you know, his prime, because um, I know he did a lot of uh, 
I did a lot of work for WCW and WWF at that point, and I wish that something from that happened for him because he is a phenomenal teacher and a phenomenal guy to talk to in the locker room. Actually, I do have one more. The future Donovan Ruddick. He this just got released. He no, 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 no. He didn't just get released. That that, that was a, it's a mutual agreement on that. Um, yeah, it was. He is fuck. He is phenomenal. Um, he has helped me out a lot too. He's given me inside advice on what I need to do and take care of myself. One of the main reasons why I started working out in February. Really Really, really hardcore. Um, he's. It, it sucks what happened to him when he first got there with the whole knee breakage and the yeah. ligaments, um, and that's what really put a stale feeling in his mouth because of uh, for wrestling is because of that. Um, he's, from what I understand, about to start doing more and more indies down in Florida, and he's probably going to stay down there if he comes back up here. Great. If he doesn't, um, I mean, hopefully, you know, he's down there. He told me he may be going to Spain. He could be going to the UK, Puerto Rico. You know, I mean, why not? I mean, the guy's six foot nine, and he's a great guy, great worker, great human being in general. And I don't see why he couldn't do anything like that. It just sucks the the, the time of his injury and. And how long it lasted, it's what potentially cost him why he couldn't get a bigger, make a bigger impact on where he was. So, All right, Brandon, I want to thank you for joining us here in uh, the uh, Aurora Community Center for this episode of the MBS and the 10 Most Influential Series. I appreciate it, and thank you, and see you guys later. All right, that'll do it for this edition of No Sweet Seats. I am the Max Super Crimfire. He is the Brandon Espinoza. We'll see you next time.